Welcome to the first episode of the comic book brackets I'm doing on Movie Feuds to determine which comic book movie is the best. Yeah, Dark Knight, that's what some of you are saying. Civil War, a few people are saying that. I don't know. That's why we're going to do this together, and your vote matters more than ever. It, it really never mattered before, but now it does, because the votes determine which one of these films moves on to a later phase, until there's only one left remaining. For this first one, I just threw out a few superhero origin stories. It didn't matter which. We're just going to pick one out of these four to move on later. We got Lee's Hulk. We have Donner's Superman, we have Raimi's Spider-Man, and we have Burden's Batman on the first comic book bracket movie feuds. Since I'm doing so many of these flicks, expect a very quick turnaround on these videos. They're going to be short and sweet. I never really do deep dives to begin with. These are more of refreshers for you to kind of jog the memory, get you ready to vote. Batman has my favorite lead here with Michael Keaton donning the cape and cowl. I quite enjoyed Affleck's take on the character, but Keaton is still my favorite version so far. Richard Donner's Superman is also a classic that has yet to be topped. Christopher Reeve may not be as hulking as Cavill's Man of Steel, but he oozes charm and charisma. Toby would fall on the other side of the tracks in that department. He's not a smooth operator by any means, but he is very likable as the webhead Spider-Man. And I'm very much Team Toby when it comes to him and Andrew Garfield. There's, there's no question about that. We'll talk about the amazing Spider-Man in another comic book bracket episode down the road. Last but not least is Eric Bana as Bruce Banner slash Hulk. I really enjoyed him here and I think he too is the best of the bunch. Ruffalo lost me in Age of Ultron. He's just too sad sack for my liking. I know Banner isn't a bundle of joy by any means, but this is where Banner really impressed me with his acting chops. His anger is always at a boil. It's always festering, just on the brink on the edge, ready to just unleash the beast. Heroes are only half the battle, with villains being just as important, if not more so. Jack Nicholson throws out a great Joker, but Defoe as the Green Goblin and Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor put in fun performances too. But that Green Goblin costume was far too Power Rangers-esque for my liking, and then you have Lex Luthor's bumbling idiot sidekicks. It just went two Three Stooges at times. We have some very solid eye candy from Kim Basinger, Jennifer Connelly, Kirsten Dunst, and Margaret Kidder. Then there's the heavy hitters, such as J. Jonah Jameson, Marlon Brando, Sam Elliott, Nick Nolte, and of course Lando Calrissian himself, Billy D. Williams. And special shout out to the giant killer mutated poodle dog from the Hulk. That was terrible. Some movies take a bit longer than others to get off the ground. They like to slow roll their hero upbringing. Uh, the Hulk, I think, took six hours before he finally showed up. It also took the whole comic book movie thing a bit too literal, using comic strips as transitional devices between scenes. The 89 Batman gives us a tragic story of Bruce Wayne's parents' murder, which has been beaten into submission at this point, but back then it was cool to see on the big screen. It's also the origin of the Joker, played brilliantly by Jack Nicholson. Superman brings the Man of Steel to Earth, where he will be raised by the Kent family and learn how to use his abilities for the good of mankind. It sets him a nice little Zod teaser for the second flick, but doesn't give Superman a whole lot of interesting battles this time around. It's impressive that it holds up as well as it does, even with very dated special effects. But I think I like Spider-Man's origin story the most. It takes itself serious enough, but also realizes there's a lot of fun and silliness to be had here. There are emotional scenes like the death of Ben Parker and grin-inducing scenes like Peter learning to shoot his webbing for the first time. Seems like only yesterday I too was learning how to shoot white sticky stuff from my hands. My son has one of those Spider-Man gloves you put on and it sprays out the, you know what? I feel like that came out wrong when I first said it and you took it somewhere else. Shame on you. Shame on you. I mentioned the touch and go effects of Superman. You know, things change. A better looking model comes along. That's the cruel reality of it all. It's the same thing I tell my wife on a daily basis. Music seems to be far more timeless in that respect. Huge leg up for Superman in that department. It's very hard to top a John Williams score. Unless you're Danny Elfman. Yeah. That Batman theme is hauntingly awesome. I dug the look of Burden's film, dark and surreal. The Batsuit and more notably the Batmobile were genius creations. They looked so damn good. Sure Keaton couldn't turn his head in that rubber costume, still worth it. Hulk had some pretty sketchy CGI, some of it working like the tank battle and frantic nature of the Green Goliath, others not so much as the overall film style filled with freeze frames and zoom-ins. 
Spider-Man Once More fares the best in my opinion with a solid mix of practical and computer generated inclusions. Danny Elfman knocked this score out of the park as well. Watching the web slinger going from building to building while the music fills the theater was an excellent experience. And as a bonus, we get the sultry voice of Chad Kroger, blaring on the guitar, busting out those vocals while Spider-Man's going across an American flag shot to remind us he's an American hero. And Chad Kroger's not. He's from Canada, so get out of here. And they say that I so as of now, you have four movies to debate. Three brilliant ones and Hulk. I don't outright hate it, and I probably should have put Iron Man up against the other three, but it's all semantics anyways. Hulk isn't going to win, so who cares? There are a lot of these episodes left to do before a champ is crowned. Let's just make sure the right one makes it to the top. Vote for the winner, post a comment, tell me you like this idea or you don't. Actually, don't tell me you don't like this idea because I only like positive things on the internet. Why else would I do a show on YouTube? It's full of nothing but praise. And remember, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. You know, I didn't think I was going to like Spider-Man the most out of these four. I learned something about myself today. We all learned something today.